Now, when Jesus heard that John had been arrested, he withdrew to Galilee. He left Nazareth and made his home in Capernaum by the sea in the territory of Zebulun and Naphtali, so that what had been spoken through the prophet Isaiah might be fulfilled. Land of Zebulun, land of Naphtali, on the road by the sea, across the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. The people who sat in darkness have seen a great light, and for those who sat in the region and shadow of death, light has dawned. From that time, Jesus began to proclaim, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. As he walked by the Sea of Galilee, Jesus saw two brothers, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And he said to them, follow me, and I will make you fish for people. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went from there, he saw two other brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother, John in the boat with their father Zebedee, mending their nets. And he called them. Immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. Jesus went throughout Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness among the people. The Gospel of the Lord. So I made light of this of today's call story uh, of Andrew and Peter. Last week, last week we had the account of the calling of these two people uh, from John's gospel. And it's a little more expanded uh, human feeling uh, story. And today we get, they're out in a boat and Jesus says, follow me. And they say, okay. So rather than start there in the gospel, I want to actually back up and start in St. Paul's letter to the Corinthians. Uh, just in case anyone has never said this to you explicitly, I don't know if I've ever said it quite like this from the pulpit here. You know, all the readings that go together each Sunday, they were put together as a package. They're meant to help you read, help read one another. Uh, so if you ever have a little trouble with one of the readings, you can always come over to one of the other ones and they look across the same territory from different angles. So when you turn to Paul's letter here to the Corinthians, it's also talking about calling. In this case, Paul is writing to a community that's having trouble with unity, having trouble with having a, a clarity of, of direction together. And so what does he do? He doesn't say, let's talk about unity. He says, remember who called you. And I, I love the way he says it. I'm going to read it right from him. I mean... Each of you says, I, I've heard there are quarrels among you. I mean, each of you says, I belong to Paul, or I belong to Apollos, or I belong to Cephas, or I belong to Christ. Has Christ been divided? Was Paul crucified for you? I love that. He's, he says, but he's not, he doesn't then say, and here's, here's how unity works. He says, who called you? And they say, well, yeah, Christ called me. And who, whose name were you baptized in? Well, I, I was baptized in Christ's name. And he calls them all to remember. I'm using call in two different ways. He, he asks them all to remember their call. And unity ends up... Well, let me quote um, the amazing Nicolas Cage. I don't think I've done this in a sermon either. Um, it, in that excellent piece of cinema gone in 60 seconds in which Nicolas Cage plays a car thief who's sort of washed up at the beginning you you see him the first shot of him is just from the waist up and he's 
giving these lines and you think he's sort of sounds pretty grand and then they zoom out and he's talking to a bunch of kids in go-karts but what he says he he says speed is a byproduct going fast but you are the car and the car is you speed is a byproduct I mean, you got to look up this clip. But St. Paul is saying the same thing. He's saying unity is a byproduct of remembering whose you are and who called you and who you were baptized into. Remember that and you'll find unity. You'll find your clarity of direction together. So come back now and see the gospel story again. Because it's so easy for it to, for Andrew and Peter jumping out of their boat, it can feel like it, this sort of preordained fairy tale Bible moment. Oh, of course, it's Jesus calling them. They just jump out of the boat. But if we see through the lens of Paul the point of remembering the call story, that maybe Matthew's doing the same thing with us here. He is showing us Andrew and Peter saying yes. He's showing us the moment where they said yes to Jesus. But he's not actually making this moment about the glow around Andrew and Peter. He's using this moment to help us see through their call story that they must have been looking at an amazing Christ. They must have been looking at an amazing Jesus. He's calling us to remember that for ourselves, to know our call story. And, and for some of us, it is like, I mean, this is a moment where Andrew and Peter say, okay, Jesus. They look Jesus in the face and say, okay, I will follow you. And some of us have that story. I have a version of that story. There's also, I found for a lot of Episcopalians, or maybe it's just a lot of Christians, but I've mostly been with Episcopalians. But for a lot of Episcopalians, it's easier than to say, remember the moment where Jesus looked me in the face and I said, okay, Jesus. There are also call, part of our call story is when we're going along doing the thing we always are otherwise doing, but we say, oh, that's how I follow Jesus in what I'm already doing. You, is that, they, I, re, I remember I was once, um, I had a volunteer role this was working with kids and it was every other weekend and I started to not enjoy it as much as I used to. And I, I thought, Oh, maybe that part of my life is kind of falling away. Maybe I, that I had thought I was kind of called in that direction, but maybe not. And then I realized, no, it's not that I don't want to do it anymore. It's that the reason I'm feeling ambivalent is because I'm tired of doing it only every other weekend. I want to be doing that full time then I could really be satisfied. That's, oh, oh, I could follow Jesus in what I'm doing by doing it this way. And a lot of you have recounted that kind of moment to me, but that's the, the jumping out of the boat of Andrew and Peter is a byproduct of them seeing Jesus' face. Those moments where we lean more deeply into our call it's actually a byproduct of us seeing, seeing the glory of God, seeing the kingdom of God out ahead of us. So to go, go again into the gospel, but to zoom out a little, do you notice what happens right before the calling of Andrew and Peter? It's another call story. Whose call? It's Jesus's call story. This moment, John the Baptist has been proclaiming in the wilderness, repent for the kingdom of God has come near and he gets arrested and taken away. And you can see in the text, Jesus looks up at that moment and has his moment where he says, oh, I'm, I'm meant to point to God in this way. I'm meant to do my ministry in this way to take up what John the Baptist has been forced to lay down. And Jesus then, the exact same words, repent for the kingdom of heaven has come near. 
And so you start to see through these texts, this pattern of discipleship that John is saying, uh, here's the face of God. And then Jesus, we see his call story. And then he says, here is God. And we see it in Paul. Paul's pointing towards the face of God. And then he says to his disciples, now you, now you should do the same. It's, it's been commented to me, at least, that uh, Jesus did not leave a strategic plan. Usually that's a, in the form of a lament. People wishing Jesus had left something more strategic for us to be about. But it seems through the pattern of these call stories and what, where the authors of the text put the focus, it seems very intentional that God has, instead of a strategic plan, left us with these living way markers, the disciples who came before us, a succession of disciples. And so you start to see something about the call stories that first you're attracted to the moment, you know, Andrew and Peter saying, yes, and you can, you picture them jumping out of the boat almost, and I, I don't know, that's my picture, jumping out of the boat and splashing to shore. You're drawn to that initially, but then then hopefully, and Paul's really good about this, Paul, Paul says, um, he, he highlights his own shortcomings even uh, to say, yes, I was called to preach the gospel and not eloquently so that you wouldn't get stuck looking at my finger, but you would look at what I'm pointing at. And it, it's the same with all of these, that the pattern is a living teacher passes it to a living teacher, passes it to a living teacher. And in every case, there's this beautiful moment where the teacher recedes and the student beholds just God, the face of God. I find it tremendously encouraging uh, to us who are bashful about telling our own story. Even St. Paul, whose call story on the road to Damascus is so uh, evocative and startling and powerful, even that story easily recedes as soon as he points to Christ and the cross of Christ and the beautiful life of Christ. None of us should be scared that in uh, sharing our own story of life with God with someone else that the other person is going to get stuck on us. Let them have your story and, and then, then step out of the way and, and then we all look together at the beautiful life of Christ. It almost, almost for every disciple, um, in the end, our call story ends up as the punchline on this magnificent joke um, that it seems at first that we're just talking about something that happened just to us. And then the next moment, we've, we've stepped out of the way and there's something much more beautiful in front of us because the, the call story, the beauty of the, our call story is a byproduct because the unity and even the church and all these things that we spend so much time preparing and getting the chairs set out just right. And like, that's, that's a byproduct. Speed is a byproduct. The church is a byproduct of being one with this God who has come to meet us face to face.